best way to access my Google Drive is I'm going to go down to my Google Chrome and click on that. I want to make sure that I'm signed into my district account. You can check by clicking on your photo. If it's not there, please sign in to the Chrome browser. If I click on it, I can see the different accounts I have, but I always want to make sure that I'm with the PSUSD account. So now that I'm there, I can click on my Google Apps and I have access to Google Drive that way. Or I can go up here and I can type in drive.google.com and that will take me to Google Drive as well. So right here you can see that this is loading our Google Drive. This is mine for example. And again, I can always check that I'm in my district account by looking for the G Suite, my photo, and then you can check that it's your email for the district. So again, we always wanna make sure that we're logged in to our district Google account. Let me show you the basics of navigating your Google Drive. So this is our interface for our Google Drive. You have the option to search in Drive. These are one of my favorite tools. I actually click on this little triangle and it gives you an advanced search and so you can look for any type of document so it helps categorize what you're looking for. So if you're looking for, for example, a document, then you can, second layer could be the owner to see if it was owned, if you're the owner, if it was not owned by you or a specific person. So I can go ahead and type in uh, a coworker maybe, and then I can look of where do you wanna look for that location and I'll search if it's in any of your drives or your shared drives. And then you have more options to put in if you want to put in a term that matches, if you want to put a time set stamp of when it was shared with you. So you can do an advanced search that way. And so that's your search bar. Then you have a few options right here. I wanted to point out the settings. So there's some options that you can customize for yourself. So if I go to settings, and I'm going to click on settings. You can see it gives you your storage. Here's the option you can choose to use this one. It says convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. So if I want it to automatically convert any files I have, I can click on this checkbox. That means that it'll convert Microsoft to Google Docs. Um, it, so that works for Word. That also works for PowerPoint to Google Slides. Um, and it works for if you use spreadsheets. If you have an Excel spreadsheet and you want it converted to a Google Sheet, then you can click on that. So this is a setting of if you want it to automatically convert your uploads, you can check that. Or if you don't want it, then you can keep that off. You have your language settings here. This is another one I point out, uh, want to point out for offline access. So if you check this, that means that when you're working on docs, sheet slides, any of those files, and let's say your internet cuts out, what it does is it allows for you to continue working offline and then once you hit Wi-Fi or any kind of internet, it'll update and all the things you've added to that Google Docs or that slides will automatically be updated. So that is something I do keep on myself and I recommend that. Again, that's only intended if this is your um, personal computer and it's not a shared device and you wanna keep that on. Uh, you have a few more options right here of you can have access for quick access if you want relevant files to be um, ready for you to use. So a few more options. So this is something you can uh, customize and you have notification and other app management here as well. So that's in your settings. So again, that's at the top. We do have other Google apps again right here. And so you can pick other apps from there. Then going to the left side, priority is something that I have on, which gives me documents that I've worked on quite frequently. So it kind of gives you a tip of here, things that you've been working on or my drive. And you can see that these are folders or documents within my drive. There is a option right here that I want to point out. If you go to this corner right here, I can click on grid view or list view. And so that's your option of what kind of view you want to set up in your Google drive. So in this view, and you'll notice that your folders are always at the top and then you have your files. So a good time that I use this is sometimes I know that I have a document that I'm working on, but I might not remember the exact name or who shared it. But if I go ahead and make it grid view, then it gives me an icon of that document, the first thing that pops up. So sometimes this is an easier way to look for something because you can visualize what it was 
but you might not remember the name. Uh, most of the time, I choose to work in the list view where everything is in alphabetic order with the folders. So that's your choice. It's right up here at the corner where you can toggle that on and off. Then on the left side, we have shared drives and this will be dependent on if you have that set up um, for your account or not. And so you can potentially, if I click on it, you'll be able to see, oops, you'll be able to see the different shared drives I'm a part of that I've been added to. Uh, again, I always want to stick to my drive and create files in here and then share them, but that is an option that's there. We also have shared with me. So if I click on that, you'll see that there's files here and these are shared with you. And so you'll see it says who it was shared by, the date, heads up here. This is not a place that we can really organize. So personally, I tend to stay away from it unless I know what the file is that I'm looking for. Um, so you'll see that there's different people that have shared things. And also it depends on the type of file. So sometimes people create a file and they put share with anyone in PSUSD. So then that means that anybody has access to viewing it. So that's why sometimes you might see names here that you don't recognize. And it's not that they intentionally shared with you, but they made a document that was available for anyone in PSUSD to open. Your next tab is recent. So this is anything recent that I've clicked on and opened. Um, so if I'm working on something and then I close it and I forget what it was, I can always tap on recent and it's there. The next is start. So these are the kind of think of these folders and items as things as your favorite that you can add a star on them. So these will navigate through and it'll filter all of my folders and files that I've starred. Um, so only these will show up. If I want to see everything in my uh, Google Drive, then I'll always go back to my drive and now hold all of the files. Starred, again, think of that as your favorites. And then obviously I have the trash icon if you want to delete anything. So that's the basic overview of the interface of the Google Drive itself. Once you're logged into your Google Drive, Let's go over how to upload files from your computer or create files in Google Drive. So your key button you're always going to look for is this button that says new. So once I click on new, you can see you have various options that come up. You can create a new folder. You can upload a file from your existing computer. Uh, you can upload an entire folder that's on your existing computer. And these are your options of where you want to create Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, or if you click over to more and scroll to the right, you'll see more Google apps that you can use. So for today, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to upload files. So if I go to file upload, it goes through and it has my files that are on my desktop or my documents anywhere in my uh, computer. So if there was a file I wanted to upload, I can go ahead and click on the file and then you wanna click on open and then it'll start downloading the file itself. So you can see that this says Seesaw Flipgrid Nearpod PDF. So once I click on that, it'll give me that the upload was complete and I have the PDF as it's loading right here. And so I can view that file right within my documents. So you have the option. I'm going to go back again to point it out. When you click on new, you have the option to up, uh, create a new folder. So if I was going to create a new folder in my drive and let's say I'm going to share it, I might title it for a school site and I would create a blank folder and then it shows up right there. And now this is my folder. So if Cabot Yurt says one of my sites, I create a folder and I can put my work right in here for anything related for Cabot. And if I want, I can click on the folder itself and you can see you have multiple options that come up. This is where I can share that folder. So if I wanted to share a schedule with a teacher at Cabot or a principal for Cabot, for example, I can go ahead and click on share. And so anything I put into that folder will automatically be shared. And so you can go ahead and search for a person and you can share it that way. And you do have the option if you click on this little triangle where it says editor, you do have the option if you want them to be able to organize, add and edit files or if you just want them to be able to look at it. 
So you can pick your settings of what you want them to be able to do with that folder. And here is where you can write a message and you can go ahead and check or uncheck to notify. Um, if you notify them, they will get an email that this folder was shared with them and then you can press send. So if you're working with different sites or different projects, it's a good idea to create different folders and share them with the correct personnel. The first tip I wanna show in terms of organization is one thing you can do to help you organize your Google Drive is to color code your folders. For example, you may be working with different departments or schools and to make folders easily accessible or just visually, I would go ahead and color code. So what I can do is I can double click on a folder or right click. Um, I can see this option right here that ch says change color. I can go ahead and click on it and you have different colors to pick from. So for example, if I'm working um, in special ed and I'm working at multiple sites, then maybe I might want to color code my folder that relates directly to those sites, a specific color. So that has a spot right there. And again, this only works with folders that you can color code. Um, I do wanna show you other things you can do. For example, if you have a file, and so if I go to shared with me and there's a file, oops, sorry, not there, that's shared drive. We wanna go to shared with me and you can see that if there's a folder or a file here that's shared with me, I can go ahead and again, right click it um, or it says right here that there's an icon where it says add a shortcut to drive to open this file from wherever you need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that icon and now I can put inside my drive, I can put that in a subfolder or just directly into my drive. So that means that instead of having to go to shared with me every time, and I'll say right here that it's added to my drive, I can just directly go to my drive and that document will be there. So I do suggest that in your shared with me, if there's any files that continuously get updated and you need to access them, always click on this icon right here that says um, add to drive. So then that will automatically be placed in here. Um, another thing you can do is if I go through and let me click on this folder again, you have other options here you can see. I can go ahead and share that folder. I can get a shareable link. So for example, if I'm gonna send this folder and I want multiple people to have access, instead of having to write out each email, I can get the link and send it through an email. So everyone on that email can have access to it. You do see that add shortcut here. This is where we can move. So if I want this folder to be placed in another location, I can go ahead and click move to, and then it'll load my drive, and then there's various folders of where I can move that to. So you are able to move files as well. So let's go ahead and click and go to the next. This is the starred, add a star, so this is think of your favorites again. That's gonna show up on this side right here with all your favorites. If again, if this is a folder or a file you use often, I do tell teachers to add it to their start. Rename, so if I need to change the name of the folder, then I can go through right here and I can rename the folder itself and it'll automatically be renamed. And I can undo if I decide to change my mind about that as well, okay? We talked about changing the color. We can search within. So if I had files within that folder, I can search within it. There's details or download. So whatever is in that folder will download onto my computer. And your last option to remove. So if you want to delete that folder or file, you can click on remove. So those are some of the basics in terms of organizing your files and folders that are in your drive.